Hey guys, Alex here from Advanced Procrastinators, and this was our timed practice during the Physics 1 uh, YouTube video live today. And so I'm just going to be going through how I solved this question, and hopefully it will help some other people. Uh, these are my solutions. I don't know if they're completely right. They should be close. But they do make sense for me at least. So if I can at least help someone, that'd be great. I'm not going to read the entire thing because everyone else can read it. I'll link the Google Drive down below for this question, but let's just get started. For student one, they're wrong when they say none of the force is exerted on the sphere in the direction of point C, right? Because if we look at this real quick, we got our sphere, tension, gravity, and the resultant of these two forces is this centripetal force. All right. Now, for student two, they say they see another problem. The vertical component must be less than the weight mg of the sphere. This part is wrong. And this part is wrong about the downward vertical component. Well, why is that? If we have, okay, we'll just look at this diagram here. Ah, uh, you know what? I'll draw another diagram. Mg. Oh, that was so bad. T. And T is the resultant of vertical and horizontal tension. Which means this vertical has to equal gravity. And thus, Tv and Mg essentially cancel each other out in the vertical direction. So we have vertical equilibrium. So the sphere should not move downward, and the spiral component is the same as mg. All right, so that's how you would do a and b. Student three correctly derives the equations, this and that, and explain, we have to use these equations to explain how they could challenge student one, student two. Over student one, if we look back at this equation right here, we can have another lovely vector diagram. We're just going to use the top part of here. So don't worry about mg. And we've got t and fc. We know here, that's this part, it's a 90 degree angle, right? And here is our angle theta. So we could really easily see that sine, oh, actually, you know what? Let me write with the blue. That sine theta, that was like an upside down i, I'm so sorry, equals fc over t. And if we look at our diagram, fc equals l and t equals, I mean, sorry, yeah, t equals l and fc equals r. So sine theta equals r over l. And now the tension force here essentially t equals sine theta fc, right? And that gives us this here. Sine theta equals r over l. fc, well, we'll just rearrange this equation now. fc is the only centripetal force. So fc equals f net. We only have fc acting horizontally on the horizontal component, right? fc is uh, the horizontal component of th, but we'll just say right now fc equals f net. So then that's this equation now. We have f net equals t sine theta, which is r over l. And that's how we, you would use this to explain student one's claim, right? to counteract students to student one's claim. Student two 
it's a bit more complicated and I will uh, there's no space for me okay you know what let's just do it let's change a different color we see our diagram here right so if we were to draw it out again mg t and we have th and tb this angle here is theta and we know that tv equals mg so essentially right now we have the equation i'll write it over here mg equals tv and tv equals t cosine theta right so now we rearrange it see we have our mg here equals this would be our t which means everything in the bracket here has to equal cosine theta and you're like so how do i do that well this is a right angle triangle right which means t squared minus th squared equals tv squared and so we would square root that that gives us the top portion here and we know that cosine theta equals tv over t and our t is the l so that's how you have this equation here. I know this is a mess, hopefully you understand it. I will rewrite it in terms of TV and all that right now. So mg equals t, t squared minus th squared over t, and that is the same as this up here. Awesome. Oh, I kind of went into the space for the other question here. So pardon me while I erase it. All right, now the students observe the radius r, this yada yada yada. Regardless of whether this equation is correct or incorrect, does it plausibly model the student's observation about the relationship between r and vy? Why not? Well, of course, right? Because they said that the radius r increases as the speed v of the sphere increases. And here we can see mathematically, if r goes up, v must go up. And why is that? Because l and g are constant. Okay, so write a sentence about that. This equation does not correctly model the relationship between R and V if V is very fast. Explain why. Well, you think about it here, okay? We have a sphere attached to the length L and it's being spun around, right? So first we have a radius R and then as the speed gets faster, it will change so that Maybe the sphere is at this point now, in a circle, right? Our r is increasing. If v is very fast, well, I did say it's traveling in a circular motion, right? Because it's rotating around a fixed axis, a fixed point, which means this r right here would be the maximum. And then as the ball keeps going, maybe it will go up. But the R then starts to decrease. Right? 
So that's what you would talk about. You draw them diagrams on this test. So R eventually reaches a max point. We can see up here, there's an angle, right? So you could say the angle is getting bigger. Okay? That's how you would do these two questions. Oh, you could also say, because we have a roof here, the sphere can't really go higher anymore. So it's going to be stuck at this R max while it's spinning that and it's not dependent on how fast it's going anymore all right let's go here now instead of moving in a horizontal circle the sphere now moves in a vertical plane so it's simple uh, so it's a simple pendulum as shown above the maximum angle of theta max the spring the, I, why do i keep saying spring oh that the string makes from the vertical can be assumed to be small blah blah blah, blah. okay so here's our graph. Explain how the graph would change under each of the following circumstances to justify your answers. Well, first, we essentially have a trend line like so. If the mass of the sphere is increased, we have an increase in EK, which means an increase in speed. Uh, what did I do that? It's an increase in speed. You're like, well, if it's an increase in speed, then wouldn't it go higher? Well, we're only dropping it from this, right? So right now you have a faster speed. Your time should go faster since distance would be the same. So your graph is anywhere here. If the maximum angle theta max is decreased, well, we have, okay, for, for this one, first of all, I forgot to mention, just say there, the, there's a less steep positive slope. Now, if the maximum angle is decreased, that means we're limiting the range of motion, right? So maybe instead of going from here to here, we're now going from here to here. And if everything else is kept the same, only your distance is smaller, then again, shouldn't your time take faster, right? So these two answers should both be less steep. And what if the pendulum is taken to the moon? Well, we have an equation here, t equals Oh, I forgot the 2 pi. 2 pi L over G, right? 2 pi is a constant. L is a constant. So as G decreases, T increases, right? So there, instead of having a less steep positive slope, we would have a more steep positive slope. All right, that's how I took a look at this question. Now here, the graph shows the angle theta from the vertical as a function of time, blah, 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 blah. Explain how this graph shows evidence of a net force acting in the sphere and how it shows that this net force is a restoring force. Well, we can see that the, dis the displacement is being restored, right? It's going from one to the other to the next. And there's no constant slope. So it's always experiencing acceleration or deceleration of some sort, which means there's an acceleration. And acceleration means there's a force, right? And so you could just say net force because there's an acceleration, that means there's a force. And this net force is a restoring force because it's 
restoring the displacement. As the sphere swings back and forth, the uh, uh, torque. This one, don't think too much about it. This one, you've got to think of this as it's traveling from right to left and from left to right, right? As shown in the diagram. So with the sphere is at its maximum rightward displacement, that means it's already starting to travel to the left. And that means from here to here, it must be the same, right? Because it's still in its range of motion before it hits maximum left. So here, it's still going clockwise. So from here to here. They say briefly state why. Well, at the maximum displacement, this is your maximum value, right? It's already rotating. Well, it's already starting to swing back to the left. So at its maximum rightward displacement, it's changing from counterclockwise to clockwise, right? So all you need to do is state that there's a change from counterclockwise to clockwise, as shown in the diagram. And yeah, that's how I took a look at these questions today. If you guys have any questions, problems, concerns, uh, here's my contact info. Oh, of course, you can always drop a comment below. And I'll see you guys next time.